Hello, and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. I think we are heading towards an end. Um, I'm seeing here Maywick says, um, Ethan says Maywick is on their way. You'll need to leave the station, get protection, or disable your tracker before they arrive. So, you know, hey. And it comes full circle because it uh, it's, uh, it's sort of about the beginning of the game in many ways. I don't know what happened to Fang. I looked back over what they were saying. Oh, is this Fang? Oh. Thank goodness. Okay. I was a little bit concerned that maybe I messed up that mission somehow. Um, and that was going to create long-term problems for me. So, but apparently Feng's okay, hopefully. Yeah, they are. Feng grins at you as the bay doors uh, slide open. Above and the rest of the building, people are busy, frightened. They speak in hushed tones and organize endless meeting after endless meeting. Avenage have avoided a full-blown crisis for now, but nothing is coming. Sorry, sorry, change is coming. Fang is in good spirits and bundles you inside before you even have the chance to greet him. That was the slickest operation this station has seen. He hugs you firmly. You made my job easy. He shakes you by the shoulders. I'm so proud. And, he smiles, I got to watch through the cameras as the Havenage security that weren't in on it assaulted the station. Fang smiled. One of them straight up just whacked Harden with their pistol. It was beautiful. They have him? He's being held, yeah. He looks around. I think the idea is to use him as leverage with Conway. Get them to back off. Maybe they'll exile him for what they have- uh, what they are done- When they are done, sorry. Or hand him over to some core authority. Feng shrugs. Now, I know he won't be an issue. I'm going to be focusing on systems for a bit. He shakes his head. Seeing as that's my actual job. He points to the ceiling. The people upstairs weren't so happy, though. They've been fielding questions about the state of the eye right and left since the recording got out. People are scared. I'm not surprised. Yeah, this whole thing hasn't won me many fans in the administration, but I think in the end they'll agree that outing Harden was worth it, whatever the methods. He touches a stack of hardware. The eye is old, and it was never meant to run like this. The master control points that Erlen and Havenage installed, they keep it spinning from the rim. That's, uh, that isn't ideal. But if you're asking me if the eye will stop spinning next cycle, no. He smiles. And me and a ton of other skilled people will be working to stop it happening in this cycle after that. Harden's problem was that he didn't believe in people. He believed in systems and their ability to shape the world around them. Fang squeezes your shoulder. But as far as I am concerned, people should be the ones running the systems, not the other way around. Anyway, Fang raps on the side of his terminal. I know you didn't come down here for a lecture. My tracker. I haven't forgotten. He produces a thumbnail drive. I managed to finish that code solution I showed you. It's a modified ripper worm, one ma uh, made to deactivate that tracker of yours. But in the time since I got back, I added something extra. That tracker of yours doesn't just show S and ARP where you are. It transmits data about the state of your body, your current condition. My worm doesn't, uh, won't just uh, dis deactivate it. It'll edit that data to tell SNRP your body is irreparably damaged. DNR, do not retrieve. He grins widely. Pretty smart, right? That's perfect. Just slot it in already. You take the drive and hold it in your hand. Then you close your eyes and open up your access ports. Take down your defenses. The worm immediately enters your closed network. It whips through it, taking things with it as it goes. The moment they are gone, you forget that they were even there. They just blink out of existence. A second later, it is done. You open your eyes. How do you feel? Asks Fang, a little nervously. Free. Fang smiles widely. Well, you are free, sleeper. He claps you on the shoulder. Fang lets the word free hang in the air a little before he continues. Seems like it might be finally time for a celebration. Fang wraps his arm around you. Jenna still owes us those drinks. He laughs and you join him, and later, when you leave, you feel deeply thankful for having such a friend. As you walk away from the building, you look up at the wide curve of the eye, up at the hub, and the other rim beyond it. The whole thing twinkles with lights, and it seems impossible to see it as anything other than break breathtakingly beautiful. It feels, in that moment, like something eternal. That doesn't make it, it mean it can or even should last forever or that it will never change, fade, or decay. 
It simply means that in this moment, this place has a future, and it is one that you know deeply and truly is worth protecting. Well, um, that feels like a big deal. Uh, I got rid of my tracker. I'm not sure why this counter is still moving. Oh, complete active scenes. Where is that? Ah, Ethan. The compressor is almost empty when you enter. A couple of scattered patrons in the booths and a lone bartender. The bartender recognizes you immediately when you arrive and nods, and you return the greeting. You know already that you won't find Ethan here, but you had to be sure. With your tracker reporting you dead, you wouldn't have stuck around. You look at the empty stool, his empty stool, and you smile. You can imagine him on, on it when his slate chirps, letting him know that the target he was tracking is dead. You can imagine the screaming and the swearing, too. Is that all you were to Ethan, another target, or was there something else going on? It seems like a foolish question to ask now, when he has fled the station, but it bothers you anyway. You take one last look and walk out. You doubt you will ever come back to this place or the memories it holds. You walk back out into the lights of the bright market and allow yourself a smile. So this is what Feng meant when he said you were free. You could get used to this. I'm a little bit sorry that uh, there's no follow-up with Ethan, but I assume that Ethan was its own story. Like, instead of completing the business with Feng, we could have completed our business with Ethan in the same way. Could honestly progress the spoke. I, I feel like if I'm, we're free, then we're maybe free to tie up some loose ends. And I would like to. Um, mushroom groves. Hey. What do you mean we need plus one into it? Collect spores. Forage for fungus. Typically avoided, but those with sharp eyes might find useful fruiting bodies. I mean, let's, uh... Let's collect some spores. Why not? Grove spores. We got a couple of them. We can put a, th a four in here. Neutral outcome. One grove spore. Pretty sure... Um, I, I do wonder if maybe this other dealy, this into it, uh, might finally let us uh, progress the, that one story with the chef. Um, map the pathways. We can do this as well. Neutral outcome, that's good. We could spend a three here. I don't mind. What's the worst that can happen, really? Oh, we lose some energy. Wow, big whoop, honestly. All right, let's, uh, let's finish this off. I want to finish the going green. New drive discovered. The aviary. Clear overgrowth. Oh, this is Endure again. Once a corporate garden for impressing guests with gene-tweaked birds, and now this chamber is a mess of overgrowth. You can change that. Every major thing... Well, okay, not every major thing. A lot of major things seems to uh, want you to use Endure. I do think this is a game I see myself playing again. I say this because I, I definitely see the... Uh, I see the end nearing us. We're going to continue. Uh, we're definitely going to tie up some loose threads. I'll try and tie up as many loose th threads as I can and maybe even do the DLC. But, uh, but I might treat the DLC like a separate um, series almost. I'll put it on here, but uh, you'll you'll notice a different thumbnail. We'll, we'll treat it as a something extra. Rico. Sleeper, Rico greets you without so much as looking up from her work. I have some of yours here. Come see. She beckons you over to a heavyweight-looking console, wired to a series of specimen jars, some of which contain your spores. Where did you get this? This, would you believe, she smiles, was a Solheim console built to analyze the nutrient contents of the Greenway Corp. Haifa have been using these for decades now, although sometimes they need a little tender care. Look at the machine, patched with hull offcuts, the gaps between which reveal a tangled nest of wiring. 
If you are honest, it looks like it has received a lot of care. The spores you have here are a real cocktail, a selection of types from within the groves, but I've been able to isolate a few. She taps one of the specimen jars. Here we have Tricholoma Matsutake. Me, uh, Rico breezes through the Latin and Japanese pronunciation as if it was nothing. A species Solheim somewhat modified for use on the station. She brings up a panel on her console showing a chemical composition, all gradiented bars and obtuse acronyms. This is the composition of the Solheim modified Matsutake spores. Am I supposed to understand that? No, not entirely, but I think you'll understand this. Rico brings up another panel, identical in layout, but with wildly different colors and numbers. You see, this is what your Matsutake spores look like. They don't they aren't the same? That's the conclusion, yes. Rico glances at the specimen jar as if it might have something to add. They are fundamentally the same spores, but they carry different chemicals, different signals. She leans back in size. Solheim may have introduced their own tweaked versions in the beginning, but the groves have and still are affecting them. Affecting them how? It's hard to tell without samples of fully grown mushrooms. She meets your eye. And herein lies our problem. She moves to another desk where two trays sit side by side. The first contains nothing but plant mulch. The second you smell before you even look at it. The pungent aroma of the fruiting matsutake like rotting, sodden overalls laced with an edge of spice. The matsutake here are grown from Soheim stalks, pulled from a spore vault in this complex. She winks. They are delicious, by the way, she sets them aside. The empty tray is germinated with the spores you collected. No activity, no germination, nothing. But the groves are full. Yes, they are. Rico looks at you directly, and you suddenly realize how much she is enjoying this. So here's our puzzle, sleeper. Spores from the groves won't grow in the lab. But gathering fruiting bodies from the groves is too unpredictable. We need, a grow, we need to grow a fruiting body from some of these spores. So we can track it, understand it. In short, I need you to become my mushroom farmer. Actually, I already started. Rico looks impressed. Well, well, an eager mycologist. I never have guessed. I assume you set yourself up in the aviary. I've been eyeing that place up for its proximity to the groves. Bring me whatever grows, not just Matsutake. There's more than a couple of variants in there, so I'll need plenty of samples. She plucks a Matsutake cap from the tray. These little things are reflections of their conditions. Their small smell, their taste, their chemistry. It all derives from the conditions of their growth. She smells the cap. Enough of these, and we'll have a picture of what is happening here. Of the ways in which this biosphere is modifying itself. Or maybe being modified. Whichever the case may be. Rico pops the Matsutake cap in her mouth, taking you by surprise. And don't worry, sleeper, she says while softly chewing. If this turns out to be a dead end, I'll make sure that not a single mushroom will go to waste. I mean, I need some mushrooms too. You think I don't eat? It's, uh, rather rude, honestly. So we could start putting points in, uh, you know, spending our high dice rolls on this clear overgrowth. I would like to do that. We do, we have two upgrade points, um, but I'd like to complete some extra drives and uh, I guess engineer would be what I want. You know what? We don't have to cross the gap again. We can actually stay here. I wonder if this is going to have some kind of finale here. No? Oh, we're starving. Yeah, that's uh, that thing is gone. So we are no longer being tracked. We're no longer being chased. What a good thing, you know? Um, all right, let's spend some of our points uh, clearing the overgrowth. Positive outcome. That was a very low chance. 25% chance. Neutral outcome. I'm cool with that. That's actually amazing. I'm going to spend as many point, uh, dice as I can here. I won't spend our three because that'll become a two. Neutral outcome, that's a bummer. Ne a negative outcome, plus one sunlit refuge. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we're good there. I don't know if there's, there's no more data here. Oh, we still need Greenway Gate. I'm assuming that's something we can pre progress.
I guess we have quite a few t loose ends because we can still progress with yet again. Um, in a way, I think that, like, removing the tracking is probably one of the best ways to, you know, kind of, um, conclude your, you know, major, uh, fallback. And I, I wouldn't even consider that to be the end of the game, although it, de it definitely is a major milestone kind of story because it concludes Feng's whole business. It concludes the fate of the ring, the eye, um, you know, like it's it's a pretty big deal. Uh, and then it also wraps up like, how are you going to spend your life? Um, we'll spend a point here. But uh, neutral outcome, you know, at the end of the day, there's still a lot to do. And so really what it's giving you is freedom to do what you need to do, what you want to do. Uh, this guy is still hanging out here it's for one more cycle, I guess. We have Doc C4. We can... Oh, no, that's... that. They're going to arrive in two cycles. Okay. Um, Emphis. That was the one. We still need these mushrooms. Let's buy some food. And, uh, go to sleep. I guess, uh, eventually we're gonna have to use more stabilizer anyway, because... I mean, we don't have to, but I... the There's a sort of a... A ticking clock in terms of how... When we get more scrap. There's other methods of getting scrap, but they're not reliable. Unless we improve some of our stats. So let's, um, I, I honestly want to pursue this uh, Greenway quest. I think that it's the one I'm most interested right now. Interested in right now. So let's go ahead and uh, put a three on there. Bet it all on black. Negative outcome. Oh, bummer. Still, we get a point for that. I guess safe means nothing bad happens. Positive outcome. We have completed it. Uh, anything happen here? Fungal beds. Germinate spores. Is that at, that's it at the aviary. So now we have to work the mushroom groves to collect spores. And then germinate those spores. We got two grove spores, so let's see if we can't do something with that. We ha we need three in total. We should be able to make progress on this this cycle. Uh, sure, I'll spend a three here. I want to keep my six for something interesting. Positive outcome. We got very lucky. There we go. Um, I guess now this needs four cycles in order for this to complete. A indirect sun of a few cycles should help them along. Okay. So now that is a clock, we can kind of leave that alone. Then there's fruiting bodies. Oh, okay. So fruiting bodies will probably give us either Matsutake samples or Girol samples. Uh, I would like to keep the Girol samples for Emphis. Interesting. Uh, I really need some more scrap. You know what I'd like to do is actually spend... Oh, we can't do this without increasing our endurance. Oof. I know there's a way to get scrap. I know I got scrap from something. I can't remember what, though. It was from completing some, like, irrelevant quest. I, I thought it was Rabia's quest. Let's com let's continue, Rabia. We haven't really visited this in a while. Prote patrol the ward. You never know what you may have to face on a patrol. 
Uh, we're on patrol. We're on patrol. Let's do it. I see the masked stranger. He's standing menacingly. All right. That's it for the day. Let us sleep. And we have slept. Um. God, this scrap freighter is still here. Why? Is it is it finally leaving? I need you to go so you can come back and give me more scrap. Or exchange. I don't. I want. Uh. Hmm. Eh. Or fabricator. Fabricate ship mind. Really don't. I guess we could have progressed this derelict unit if we really wanted to. I don't think I really wanted to. We're at four action dice now. That kind of sucks. Um, so we're just kind of waiting on mushrooms over in Greenway. So I'm not sure. I guess... I guess I'll continue the side reel. I could finish it off. I don't know how I feel about this. I definitely don't want to leave the eye. I definitely want to finish um, some side quests first. It says danger. I'll take a risk. We'll take a risk. Positive outcome. Cool. Your crew slowly filters out of the shipyard locker room, the bubbling chatter reducing with each group that leaves. There is excitement in the air. Havenage just made an announcement. The assembly teams are done. Sat on the locker room bench, you can feel the side reel out there. It's hulking mass now intimately familiar to you. Over the past cycles, you have watched it grow, be assembled. You have walked through its veins and welded its bones. Now it is ready for the final stage. It will go to testing now, then enter a final process of sealing and resealing, checking and rechecking before it is deemed suitable for its generational trip. But for now, your work is done. You can't help but feel proud. A cough interrupts your thoughts. It's Lem, changing out of his work gear. Mina nowhere to be seen. He smiles. She'll be ready soon. Where's Mina? You two are fast friends, huh? She's being watched at home. Now I'm uh, on the work team. I can afford a bit more help. He corrects himself. Was on the work team, I mean. We are all out of a job now. He quickly adds. Not that I'm complaining. Lem comes to sit beside you on the bench. She's got to be in her best shape when she carries you, Mina and me out of here. So confident? Lem smiles apologetically. Why not? I figure I'm due a lucky turn by now. He rubs his hands nervously. No use in wa uh, wondering what if. Until the draw, anyway. And there's a few cycles till then. I think I see where this is going. Lem is right, but the odds seem unlikely anyway. How many are working in the shipyard? Hundreds? A thousand? You've certainly seen more faces than you can count pass through. And the Celis Foundation even going to the keep their promise? Out here on the IU, get the sense that no one will hold them to it. Why else would they be building the side reel in a surrogate system? As you think, Lem watches you with a worried look. Um, how's Mina doing? Lem is surprised by the question, but smiles. She's doing well. She misses having you over, actually. I need to get you two together again, soon. Especially now that I won't see you here, either. Lem gazes into space. She's pretty stuck on you, actually. She told me the other cycle that she doesn't want to go unless you can come too. He sighs. You ever been in a thunderstorm sleeper? A real one? I don't remember. Lem shoots you a worried look for a moment. It's something else. He smiles. The sound, the smell, the rain hammering down. The whole sky stretched out and bruised, roaring and huge. The place I was born. New Pembroke. A dry old rock in a Conway system had two seasons. One of them was as dry as bone, dusty, ugly. The other one was long. Uh, the other was one long storm, a side effect of the terraforming efforts, they said. Rain, rain used to rattle off the roofs like bullets. It washed the dust away, turned the streets to rivers. It'd sing us to sleep and wake us in the morning. We'd wait half a year just to see it again. The best day was the one where the first drops fell. He sniffs. 
Some days I wake up swearing I can hear it again. I was thinking, Mina has never seen a storm, never even felt rain. She's grown up here, the, rain, the ring her only horizon, always in the dark. I want to change that for her. You will. Of course, almost there. Lem stands stretching. Best get back to the little one anyway. With the shifts done, I reckon she'll be happy to ha have me home for a few cycles. He shoulders his gear. See you in a few for the draw. I'll be there. Right on, he grins. Lem leaves, making you the last person in the cavernous locker room. As you sit, you think about rain, and a little hope creeps in. Is it possible? Could the side reel really take you to a planet, a place with weather and skies with life? You get up quickly, before you can think about it anymore. It's too soon to hope, too dangerous. There's work to be done. So we're waiting six cycles to find out what happens with that. What's up with the shipyard? Side reel draw. Oh, in three cycles. Okay. So in three cycles, we'll have a draw. And then in six cycles, the, the side reel horizon leaves. So um, I actually think I'm going to keep my prediction to myself because sometimes or usually I am wrong about these things. But uh, I guess I assume that, you know, stories are going to be predictable and uh, and therefore I predict them. But sometimes they attempt not to be predictable, if that makes sense. So, you know, best not to assume the worst in a way. I don't want to steal the harvest. I don't really want to do anything here. Uh, I don't, you know, I don't even really want to work the stacks there. We can't, can we do something with this? The groves collect spores. I guess we may as well do this. Why not? Because we're, here's, uh, here's my assumption about this. Is that we are going to be treating this as a long-term farm. And, um, when these groves, uh, when these grow, the aviary will become available again for growing future spores and we'll probably get a mix of two or three different kinds of mushrooms so this is a like a long-term quest that we have to kind of keep plugging away at i think we have room or time for one more cycle before i end the episode we are starving um all right Oh, we've got plenty of money for food. You know what? Let's buy some food from the farm of the farm stacks. See what that looks like. It only gives us two food, two energy. That's a waste. Wow. What an absolute waste of money. Why? I don't understand the point of that. Maybe, maybe if you get there via the free spoke. I, I guess I could make progress on the free spoke. Let's, uh, let's put some points into this. That uses up energy to do so. Okay. Neutral outcome. Oh, what is this? Midline Freight Hub. Freight Operator. Midline Security. That's Interface. Steal a ship, ship, uh, shipment. Oh, we can do that. That's one diverted package. You will, you would have no idea what you were stealing, but that's part of the fun, right? Yeah, that does sound like fun, actually. And we can very easily do that. Except if I do that too many times, it probably locks us out completely. We got some gear oil cra uh, caps. Holy, finally. Heck yeah, let's do that one more time. Can we get two more? Random items. What did we get? I have no idea what we got. Uh, did we get caught? I think we got caught. Oh wait, no. No, we're okay. No, wait, that's uh, something different. Yeah, that's it, it completely disappeared now. Yeah, we got caught. Shoot. I really, I really screwed the pooch on that one, like, immediately, didn't I? I needed three gear oil cra uh, caps, though. I need three. 
Uh, two. I have. I finally have any of these. I've been trying to get them for ages. Um. Uh, we're starving. Well, let's go and get some food from Memphis. Okay, uh, well, that is actually going to do it. That was one cycle, and uh, though we didn't really progress anything, you know, we, we in fact, we ruined some things, or just one thing, really. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give, beat myself up that much. It wasn't really a big deal. I don't think there was any story progress to be made there. It's just another outlet to receive certain things. Um, but we are going to end the episode there. Uh, if you are enjoying the series, definitely hit the like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.